investments, risks, fees, and expenses. Read and consider it carefully before investing. Welcome back to Squawk Box. Let's talk about the broader markets now. Here with us for that is Lindsay Bell, investment strategist at CFRA Research, and Michael Tyler, chief investment officer at Eastern Bank Wealth Management. Good to have you here. Thanks for having us. Ray Dalio, LinkedIn Post. He's worried about the markets. Front page story of the journal, rally in the metals markets and commodities. They seem to be sending conflicting messages, right? To me, you see a rally in commodities and you think, actually, that's portending good things for the economy. But he's nervous. Where do you fall on this issue? I, I think that uh, there, there's good reason to be optimistic right now on the economy and on the markets. And I think the rally in, in commodities is telling you something. It's telling you that Asia in particular is doing reasonably well and that's drawing demand. Global growth is still on the upswing, not on the downswing. And I think that that plus a slightly weaker dollar is enough to continue drawing U.S. companies uh, to do pretty well. Lindsay? So, I would say we're, we are long-term optimistic on the market, but I will say we're going into, we're in August, going into September, the two most volatile and worst performing months for the S&P 500. So I can see where some of the concerns come from. We have some pretty big issues that are coming to the forefront here. We've got budget talks, debt ceiling, um, tax reform that's going to be on the table. It could create a lot of volatility. His LinkedIn post is about geopolitics which thus far haven't derailed the market at all, but he seems to suggest that, that a moment is coming. But that's not your concern. You, you sound like it's the, the classic, God, it's been a really long time since we've had a correction, and reversion to me, the mean would suggest that at some point it's going to happen. Yes, exactly. That's where we're at. Geopolitics are always something that's really hard to anticipate anyway. The fundamentals are there, though. Like, some of the major things, like, when we enter bear markets, you usually see an inversion of the yield curve. We're nowhere near that right now. We have a lot of positive economic data points. You know the I, copper roof thing, right? The, yeah. Every, it, bull, every bull market has a copper roof. That's what I think you were alluding to, right? As, uh, it, it, which is not, doesn't really make sense because if things are really percolating, you know, as far as global growth goes, it should be good for the market, but it seems to indicate maybe you're getting towards the end of a cycle or something if every bull market has a as a copper roof, but that, that might be something. But it doesn't seem like it's a, like there's inflation that's going to result from commodity rises because you don't have it in the wage sector. Well, the wage sector is interesting because although the reported wage numbers are, what, 2.5% or something, that doesn't include a lot of things like bonuses, um, commissions, and so on. It only includes salary and wages. If you look at payroll, if you look at, I'm sorry, um, tax data uh, from payroll taxes, you find actually more like 6% wage growth uh, or 6% total compensation growth. At the high end of the job market, there's a shortage. There is labor price inflation. Um, it's at the lower end that we're not seeing it. Um, I don't think the Fed's particularly noticing that. Um, and uh, contrary to Lindsay, I do think a, an inverted yield curve is a concern. The spread between the five and the 30 year treasuries is fairly tight. Um, that gives them very little room to raise rates more than maybe the ones that they've promised for the rest of the year, in which markets are kind of doubting anyway. That, you're suggesting we could get an inverted yield curve. It's closer than... It's closer than people think. I think we're probably about two hikes away from that. And I think that the Fed is and ought to be very concerned about that. That's why they want longer rates to rise as well. And the way to do that is to get stronger economic growth. What about just selling all the stuff you own on the long end? Well, they're not selling. That's the thing. <laughs> right. What they're doing is they're letting maturities roll off. What's the maturity? What's the duration of a 30-year bond that's maturing? It's zero. It's still an ultra-short instrument. So unless they actually sell long-term instruments, which they're not doing, you're not going to have uh, a benefit to the long-term interest rate. So, Lindsay, you said long-term optimistic, but you seem to suggest short-term you thought the market might struggle a little bit. In terms of a strategist, that's what you are. You tell your clients to do what? Well, I, I think right now that it's, it makes sense to get a little more defensive, at least in the near term. And you're seeing the utilities rally. Um, we like that sector. Um, Even the, though it's really expensive. I know. It's really expensive. But um, that and even consumer staples, the earnings have really been good coming out of that group, even though uh, you have a lot of competitive pressures and, um, and, you know, lack of inflation. So... You know, near term, we're you know, a little more cautious, would definitely consider defensive sector. One note, because I feel like the headline on this Ray Dalio piece is getting misinterpreted. If you really read into what he's saying, he's actually the opposite of where you are, which is to say you may be short-term bearish, long-term bullish. I would, I would contend, if you really read into what he's saying, and I, I go, I, I'm going to re read you a moment of it, he says, while I see no important economic risks on the horizon, meaning like immediately, that's, he's not worried about now. 
He's saying, I'm concerned about growing internal and external conflict leading to impaired government efficiency, inabilities to pass legislation, set policies, and other conflicts. Then goes on to say that he thinks it looks like it could be 1937 in the future. But I think he, he's, he's sort of made, and by the way, he's been making this argument. We are now economically right. and socially divided and burdened in ways that are broadly well, analogous you don't to 1937. To go, but, but, he thinks I think it's, it's right analogous now. to 2008. But just, just to put a fine point <laughs> don't on Don't you? you? We can go back. Ineffective fine, government, we can go back, gridlock, we can go back divided. I did an interview with him on this did show, okay then. I want to say five years ago, where he has been, he's made this argument before. So the only reason right. I suggest that is this, this is not somehow, uh, I wouldn't even say this is his fresh take. He, he's been making a version of this argument. Maybe he's getting more pessimistic long term. It was about a construct things. so we could have a different version of the market discussion. But, but there's, there's, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, but there's nothing the new about ineffective down. government and gridlock. That's where we've been. That's, uh, I mean, it's less so just, probably. Just, make, just making the point uh, that right. he's, well, it may be, it, it, he may it, be closer to where you are. The waterboard stopped. Industry. The waterboarding stopped. <laughs> Well, I think tax reform is going to be a really great test um, for Congress and, you know, the gridlock that we are seeing because it is impairing, will eventually impair economic right. growth longer term if we don't get some sort of tax reform or tax What cuts. do you think is built into the market right now on that? Uh, there's very little built into the market on that zero. right Zero. So it doesn't go down. Zero. So it does not go down if nothing happens this year. Right. As a and you get you probably get a strong rally if they do even anything. Even a five percent cut. Yeah. I think they'd get a rally. Dalio Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Dalio was bearish like five really bearish like five years ago, wasn't he? Like remember? I said, it was a construct for our no, market no, no, discussion. By the way, I wasn't worried about the, the construct. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood. Well, recently, I just remember he's been, being he's been, he's been on this tack for for a while. I just remember being thinking, oh boy, he's got you know hundred and he's got a gazillion dollars under management and he's really bearish. And it and it never can't, you know, at least at this point we're still waiting. For, uh, He's talking back. He's for still the, fully invested. Right, right. A lot of people are like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk about the role of business leaders.